So, I got a very special video for you guys today. I've teamed up with Xbox Game Pass for PC to create a tiny PC build. It's gonna be a very small build to celebrate the release of Grounded, which is available right now. Grounded is a first person co-op survival game where your character has been shrunken down to a tiny size and all the things you considered small are all of a sudden the biggest threat. Ants, spiders, ladybugs all become your biggest nightmare. Now the parts I'm using are easy to follow along. I'm gonna teach you guys how to build this PC and of course we're gonna be testing the gameplay. Now the case of choice, I went with the NZXT H1. This is a 13 liter case. I know they're smaller between five and seven but the problem with those cases, they're usually boutique. And right now half of them are all sold out or have really long pre-order times. The NZXT H1 is the perfect ITX case for the first time builder. It comes pre-installed with an all-in-one water cooler and a small form factor power supply, meaning you don't have to buy those two parts separately. Motherboard of choice is a mini ITX ROG Strix Z490 gaming motherboard. This is a beautiful motherboard. It houses the 10th gen Intel processors. I like it because it has two M2 slots and just the right amount of RGB. The processor of choice is the Intel 10900K. Because I have a budget of $2,500, we gotta go with the best CPU for gaming. Now this is an interesting story. You can't buy this anywhere in Canada. It's sold out everywhere. And for the two stores that do have it, they've significantly increased the prices. I had to contact Intel directly to send this to me. So thank you, Intel, for sending out this processor. The hard drives or SSDs of choice is the Samsung 970 Evo. These guys are super fast. So we're going with one 500 gigabyte drive for the main drive. This will house Windows and a few applications. Then the bigger one terabyte drive is going to be for the games. The RAM of choice is the G-Scale Trident Z. This is 32 gigabytes, 3600 megahertz, very fast RAM. This is perfect for not only gaming, but good for content creation or other workflows that require a lot more RAM. And finally, the GPU of choice is the RTX 2080 Super, not the 2080 Ti. The 2080 Ti is way too expensive, would have eaten up half my budget, and the 10 to 15% performance difference is really not justified. The 2080 Super just offers a lot more value per dollar. All right, enough chit chat, let's build this PC. So the first thing we need to do is get the backplate ready. Since this is a socket for an Intel CPU, it's going to need a backplate. You wanna take the four long screws from the package that comes with the case and insert them into the top of the bracket. Don't place them through it. You wanna insert it at the top. Take the four smaller screws and use a Phillips screwdriver to screw them into the back of the back plate, which holds the longer screws in place. Yes, you're screwing the smaller screws into the bigger screws. Once that's done, attach the back plate to the motherboard. You can then screw in the round headers now or do it later like I did. I suggest doing it now as it will make sure that the back plate stays connected to the motherboard since you'll be moving it around a lot. Next, we insert the CPU. Take the arm, move it outwards, and the socket will open up. Remove the plastic piece, but don't throw it away as you might want to sell the motherboard down the road. Grab the CPU, look for the little triangle, and line up the CPU triangle with the triangle on the socket. Now don't force this down. It should drop in naturally. If you place any force on it, you have the possibility of bending the pins. Go ahead and close the cover. You'll feel some pressure and swing the arm inwards to keep it nice and secure. Next, we have to install the M2 drives. And because both drives are on top of the motherboard, I'm not too worried about overheating. The problem with this case and motherboards that have the second slot on the back, it could potentially cause the drive to get too hot. But because both drives are on top of the motherboard, that's less likely to happen. Remove the three screws from the top of the plate. Be careful when you pry it open because there is an eight pin connector and you don't want to damage it. Next, remove the remaining screw on the M2 circuit board. One M2 drive mounts on the top and the other one just below. To mount the second one, you need to remove two more screws. Place the one terabyte drive into the bottom M2 slot. It will sort of stick up diagonally at first, but that's because you have to screw it down. You wanna take the screw which is a tiny little thing that comes with the drive and you want to place it inside of a mount. Screw in the mount first, then screw in the little screw 
into the mount and this will hold the drive in place. Now once the drive is in place, you're going to need to remove the plastic from the thermal pad which helps keep the drive cool. Careful not to rip the entire thing off. Long nails will definitely come in handy. Screw the plate back on and one drive is ready to go. Flip it over and do the same thing for the 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. Insert it, it will pop upwards. Place the screw mount in the 2280 hole and then press the drive down and then screw the little screw <laughs> to keep it in place. Finally, do the same thing you did before and remove the plastic from the thermal pad. Connect the M2 enclosure back to the motherboard and screw in the remaining four screws to secure it in place. Now we have to insert the RAM. Each RAM slot has a hatch that opens up to allow you to insert the RAM. Some motherboards have a hatch on top and the bottom, but this one is only using one at the top. Make sure to line up the RAM correctly as one half is shorter than the other. If you line it up incorrectly and you start applying pressure, you could damage the RAM or possibly damage the motherboard. Place the first stick in, once it goes in, you should hear a little click and the hatch should close. Do the same thing for the second stick. The beauty about this case, it's so easy to work with, making it a good option for a first time mini ITX builder. NZXT does a fantastic job of helping you follow along. Remove all the stickers as you go along. The first thing you need to do is open up the radiator so we can access the inside of the case. There's only two screws. They're very tight, so make sure to use the right size Phillips screwdriver and not to strip them. Once open, remove all the styrofoam and place the pump out of the way. Make sure to keep the pump cables spread apart. They should never be bunched up or tangled. Take the motherboard and place it on top of the standoffs. Get the four tiny screws that come with the case and screw them in. There are four holes, one on each corner of the motherboard. Next, I plugged in the GPU riser cable since we're mounting it vertically. There's only one slot for this to go in. The size is perfect, so press it down appropriately. After that, I plugged in the HD audio, which is at the back of the motherboard. It may be in a different position for yours. Next is the USB 2.0 header which just simply snaps into the left side of this motherboard by gently pressing it down. You're going to do the same thing with the blue USB 3.0 header. You're going to press it down. There's only one spot for this to go in. So this is really cool. On a lot of builds I've done, the power switch, reset switch, LED cables are usually all separate. NZXT has combined them all into one cable, making your life so much easier. Find the appropriate spot for this. Be careful when pressing down because these are pins and you don't want to bend them. Next is the motherboard 24 pin connector. This only goes in one way, so line it up properly and press it down. Make sure it's secure or your computer won't boot. Do the same thing with the 8 pin CPU connector on the other side of the motherboard. These also have to be 100% secure or your CPU will receive no power. Finally, plug in the last two cables, one of them being the pump cable and the other the fan. The pump goes into the spot where it says AIO pump and the fan cable goes into the spot where it says CPU fan. So with the cables out of the way, we have to attach the pump to the CPU. We don't need to apply any thermal paste as the cooler has it applied by default. Remove the plastic piece, follow the instructions on the sticker so it faces the right way, and keep the pump cable spread apart. Get the remaining four screws to mount it to the CPU. I usually use a vertical approach. I'll start with one corner, lightly screw it in, then I'll go to the opposite vertical corner, lightly screw that one in, and then do the same thing for the last two screws. I'm doing this, but I'm not tightening them up too much. I just want it to be secure in place. Once I have all four screws in, then I'll start tighten them up so they're nice and secure. The last thing you want to do is tidy up all the cables, close the radiator, and screw the two enclosure screws back in. Now we're almost done, and we have to do one more thing, and that's install the GPU. But before we do that, we have to remove the back plates. There's two of them, which means two screws. Remove them out of the way, and then insert the GPU into the riser, but make sure to lift the little white latch so it locks into place. Now take those two screws that you just took out, put them back into the holes where you found them, and the GPU will be nice and secure. Tidy up any remaining cables and you're good to go. Now let's paint this bad boy. To start a brand new game you have options to choose between four different characters i'm gonna go with max because i think he looks the most badass so we've been completely shrunken down to the size of an ant and the whole idea is to survive 
Take that, plant fiber. Ooh, so I gotta build some sort of ax in order to cut this stuff down. If I wanna run, it's shift. Let's grab this. Mushrooms, okay. So mushrooms looks like it's gonna be used for food. So let's see what happens when I eat it. So all of a sudden the little chicken looking symbol on the bottom left is starting to fill up with health. Let's go in here first. Okay, so this analyzes. I got a few things in here. Let's analyze the pebblet. Pebblet axe, cool. Okay, so that pebblet axe tells me that I can probably create an axe to start chopping down those trees. Craft, woven fiber tools, pebblet axe. Okay, so I need one woven fiber and I need three sprigs, which I don't have. Okay, this is a sprig, I'll take that. More plant fibers. Ah, ah, oh my God, it's so scary. Okay, I'll tell you one thing, I'm, I'm never crushing ants again. And bees? All right, okay, this is, if you guys are scared of bugs, then this game is gonna give you uh, the goosebumps. It's a ladybug. Hey, where are you going? Why do I feel like if I attack this, it's just gonna absolutely destroy me? You know what? I'm not gonna touch you. I'm not gonna touch you. What? But you! Ew! Disgusting. All right, this looks like some sort of, I don't know, electrical device. It has a motherboard on the bottom. Okay, target. Let's press this. All right, mysterious machine. Investigate the mysterious machine. Unblock the obstructed laser. Okay. All right, I can see right here that this plant is blocking that beam. Now that I have this pebble stick, I can go ahead and cut down this tree. All right, so the laser's now free. Oh, look at this one. Look at that. See, that laser's not 100% solid. So it's something to do with that one over there. Let's go take a look. Okay, okay, ah, so this cable is being shocked. And based on these lawn mites, I have a feeling it's something to do with them. Let's take this out. Get out of here. Is there any more up there? No. So let's follow this down and make sure we're doing okay in here. It's gonna be super, oh my God. I can't see anything here. Oh my God. How am I supposed to see this? Ah! Torch would so come in handy. Where is it? I can't see anything. Oh, it's dead. There's one more, over, oh, two more over here. Okay, lasers unobstructed. What's this in here? Ooh. All right, can we activate it now? Yeah. Sweet. Looks like we completed the first mission. How are the frames? GPU is running at 77 degrees. CPU is at 50 degrees. Temperatures look okay. GPU is a little hot, but this is a smaller enclosure. Frame rates are not too bad. It's over 60, that's all that matters. So this game is actually pushing the GPU pretty hard. I'm kind of shocked. All right, so that's done. Investigate the Mysterious Part 2. Further, investigate the explosion at the oak tree. I don't know, oh my God, spiders, no. No. I'm not messing with these spiders. Are they alive? Are they? Ah! Oh my God, that's Jesus. That scared me. Okay, I died. So, what do you guys think of Grounded? I personally think it looks pretty cool. And by the time this video is out, the game will be available to play with Xbox Game Pass for PC. $5.99 Canadian a month nets you access to Grounded and hundreds of other awesome games. Plus, you get to play upcoming titles like Flight Simulator and Halo Infinite. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.